from Bobby Gruen Field, home of the Red Elephants in Gainesville, Georgia. This is the Region 8 Sports Report. I'm Buddy Hortigree with the Region 8 Sports Report. Tonight we've got some interesting stuff for you. We've got all the scores from all the games in Region 8 from all across the region, from 8 1A all the way up to 8 6A. We've also got highlights from the Gainesville and Lanier High School game that was played on Friday night. We've got the results and the highlights on that game for you. We'll also take a look at the standings from all the teams in Region 8 from 1A all the way up to 6A, as usual. And we'll also take a look at the upcoming Friday night's schedule of games scheduled for all the teams in Region 8. The uh, standings are getting pretty interesting now. It's only about three weeks away from the playoffs for some of these teams, and some of them have uh, four weeks left. But for the most part, it's about three weeks until playoff time. So the standings are going to be very important starting this week. So we'll take a close look at all that information. But right now, it's time for the highlights of the game between Lanier and Gainesville, played here at Bobby Gruen Field on Friday night. And here are those highlights for you right now. This week's Highlights come from the Loganville-Gainesville game. Loganville kicked off to Gainesville to start things off, and the kick went through the end zone. Gainesville started on their own 20, but they couldn't move the ball, so they punted to Lanier. Marco Beatty carried for Lanier for seven yards to the 38 of Gainesville, and then Noah Thomas attempted a 42-yard field goal attempt, but the uh, snap was high, and number 39 Thomas covers it on the 48-yard line. Gainesville goes back on offense. Chris Bird takes the option for a six-yard carry. After a couple of punts, Lanier tries another field goal, this one from 37 yards. Again, no good. And we're in the second quarter, and we're still scoreless. Kingsville back on offense now. Messiah Dorsey hits Chris Bird for a first down pass, thanks to Bird's second or third effort. Messiah Dorsey then rips a 20-yard run for a first down. But again, Gainesville cannot keep the drive going, and they have to punt it away to Lanier. Taj Tolbert fakes a handoff to Marcella Beatty and pitches to Marco Beatty, his brother, and he goes for a first down. Marcella Beatty carries for 17 yards and another first down. But again, the drive stalls and Gainesville will take over on offense. Gainesville tries a 58-yard field goal. Chandler Stanton's kick was no good. We're all still scoreless with only 104 to go in the first half, and that's the way the first half would end. Second half action now, Marco Beatty carries to, from the 45-yard line down to the 28-yard line. Then he picks his way down to the 20-yard line. But the drive again stalls, and Noah Thomas comes in to attempt a 22-yard field goal, and the third time's the charm. Lanier now leads by a score of three to nothing. Gainesville goes back on offense. Messiah Dorsey, however, lost the handle on the football. Fumble, and Lanier recovers with good field position on the Gainesville 28-yard line. Taj Talbert passes to Joshua Stroud, who gets away from the first defender and gets down to the 13-yard line. Then Marcella Beatty hurdles down to the 10-yard line. And a couple plays later, Taj Talbert passes the ball on fourth down. Watch closely as it goes through the hands of Derrick Brown, but it's caught by Juwan Jones for the touchdown. The extra point attempt is good, and the score is Lanier 10, Gainesville nothing, with 3.03 to go in the third quarter. Gainesville back on offense now. Messiah Dorsey runs for 16 yards and a Gainesville first down. But Gainesville again can't move, so they have to punt. But the punt is crushed by Derek Brown, who then picks it up and rumbles down to the 22-yard line. We go to the fourth quarter. We change sides of the field. Taj Talbert hits Mar Marcella Beatty with a short pass down to the three-yard line. Then Marco Beatty gets stopped at the one-yard line. 
So they send in big number 90, Derek Brown, to push it into the end zone, but even he gets stopped short of the end zone. So Derek Brown tries a second time and makes it in for the touchdown. But the extra point attempt coming up, we have a bad snap, and we can't get that extra point through there. So that turns into a free-for-all. Obviously, the point is no good, and the score remains Lanier 16, Gainesville 0. Gainesville has to work fast now, and they do. Quarterback Messiah Dorsey runs down to the 10-yard line. Then he hits Tracy Blackwell down at the 3-yard line. Then Messiah Dorsey takes it in for the score. Gainesville decides to go for two. Dorsey hits Tay Turner, who tips the ball up in the air and then catches it. So the score is good, and the score remains Lanier 16, Gainesville 8. And that's the way the score would end right there. Lanier 16, Gainesville 8. So there you have the highlights between the uh, Gainesville Red Elephants and the Lanier Longhorns. Lanier, of course, coming out on top of that game. And it was a good game, though. 16 to 8 was the final score. It was still anybody's ball game right down to the end of it there. So good game, very good game. Uh, we'll now take a look. At, well, well, coming up here, we'll take a look at the scores from all the other games played in Region 8 on Friday night. We'll take a break first of all, and then we'll come back and take a look at all those scores for you right after this on the Region 8 Sports Report. Back with the Region 8 Sports Report, it's time to take a look at all of the scores from all of the games in Region 8 from 1A all the way up to 6A. We'll start with Region 8, 6A, and here they are. Okay, time to check the scores from the games from last Friday night, and we had a lot of games to get scores on last Friday night. 8, 6A. Starting with this one right here, Will Bearden was 5 out of 6 passing for 257 yards for four touchdowns. Archer scored five touchdowns in the first half and defeated South Gwinnett by a score of 38 to three. Parkview quarterback Jack Chambers was nine out of 11 passing for 97 yards and two touchdown passes. Running back Dion Slade carried the ball five times for 62 yards and two touchdowns. Parkview returned two interceptions for touchdowns and one punt for a touchdown. Final score, Parkview 69, Burke Mars 0. Brookwood was behind 21-7, but Matthew Hill took the second half kickoff. 90 yards for a touchdown. Dorian Miles caught a 27-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Angelo Despeña with 59 seconds to go in the game. And the final score was Brookwood 33, Central Gwinnett 28. Grayson led 52 to 3 at the halftime. Grayson got two safeties and three fumble recoveries for touchdowns and went on to defeat Shiloh by a score of 66 to 3. 8 5 A. Loganville defeated Cedar Shoals by a score of 23 to 7. Jesus Alvarez recovered a Clark Central fumble in the end zone to start the ball rolling for Flowery Branch. Another defensive touchdown and a safety gave Flowery Branch a 16-0 lead at the halftime. Clark Central bounced back, but wasn't enough. Flowery Branch won by a score of 28-21. Lanier defeated Gainesville, the game that you saw the highlights to just a few minutes ago here. Final score, Lanier 16, Gainesville 8. 8-4-A. Eight, Buford only led 14 to nothing at halftime, but scored four touchdowns in the third quarter on their way to a 48 to nothing win over North Hall. Buford defense held North Hall to 76 yards total offense. Madison County defeated Chestity by a score of 59 to 29. Osborne defeated Johnson by a score of 33 to six. It was North Oconee over Monroe area by a score of 33 to six. White County led 14 to nothing over Stevens County at halftime, but the Indians rushed for 281 yards in the second half and tied the game 14 all. White County's Clancy Loudermilk returned a kickoff for 75 yards for a touchdown, and White County was back on top 20 to 14. They missed the extra point though. AJ Howard later returned a touchdown for Stevens County. The Indians made the extra point 
and Stevens County went on to win by a score of 21 to nothing. Eight Triple A. Hart County led 28 to nothing at halftime, then rattled off 34 points in the final eight minutes of the third quarter. Hart County defeated East Jackson by a score of 62 to nothing. Elbert County defeated Jackson County by a score of 20 to 14. Colby Wood had 21 carries for 146 yards and two touchdowns and led Jefferson to a 17 to nothing win over Morgan County. Eight double A. Union County defeated Green County by a score of 49 to 28. It was Rabin County over Oglethorpe County 60 to 12. Washington Wilkes defeated Riverside Military Academy 14 to three. And Crawford over a social circle by a score of 40 to 34. Eight A. Prince Avenue over Athens Academy by a score of 45 to 14. Athens Christian over Towns County 35 to seven. George Walton defeated Lakeview Academy 42 to 20. And it was Hebron over Providence Christian by a score of 21 to 14. So there you have the scores from all the games played Friday night in Region 8. Now it's time to take a look at the standings and see how everybody levels out as far as who's in first, who's in second, who's in not so well, third, fourth, fifth, last, you know. Take a look at the standings, and this is going to get very important now as we get closer to the playoffs, only about three or four weeks away from now. So let's take a look at the standings, starting with Region 86A. Time to take a look now at the standings for all the schools in Region 8, and that includes Region 86A all the way down to Region 81A. We'll start with Region 86A, as we always do. And we see at the top of the leaderboard still Grayson with a 5 and 0 region record. They are 7 and 0 overall. Brookwood is 4-1, only one game behind 4-3 overall. Central Gwinnett is 3-1, they are 4-2 overall. And then Decula also at 3-1, 4-2 overall. Archer also at 3-1 with Paul Renee at 5-1 record overall. Parkview 2-2 two two with a 4-2 overall record. South Gwinnett 0-5 in the region with a 1-6 overall record. Shiloh 0-4 in the region, 4-6 overall. And Bergmar 0-5 also we see Grayson in the lead with a 5-0 sub-region record, a region record. Brookwood 4-1 with the second place in the region record. And Central Gwinnett, Decula, and Archer all at 3-1. Moving now to Region 5A. And see what the, we have there. We have Lanier with a 5-0 record, 6-0 overall. Loganville right behind them with a 5-1 record and a 6-1 overall. And of course, that one loss was to Lanier. Uh, Gainesville is at four and one. They are four and two overall. Winder Barrow three and two. They are three and three overall. Salem also at three and two. They are four and two overall. Flowery Branch at three and three in the region and four and three overall. Clark Central two and three with a two and four overall record. Cedar Shoals one and four in the region, one and five overall. Appalachian zero oh and five. 0-6 overall. Heritage also at 0-5 in the region and 0-6 overall. So we see Lanier in first with a 5-0 record. Loganville in second with a 5-1. But Gainesville also in second with a 4-1. And, and Winder Barrow and Salem tied for that fourth position with three and two region records. Moving now to region 8-4A. See who we have here. Stevens County at 3-0, they are 5-1 overall. Buford also at 3-0, 5-1 overall. North Oconee at 2-1, 3-3 overall. North Hall at 1-2 in the region, 2-4 overall. Madison County also at 1-2, 1-5 overall. Y County also at 1-2, 1-5 overall. Monroe area also 1-2 with a 2-4 overall record. Chesapeake 0-3 in the region, 0-6 overall. And Johnson of Gainesville 0-0, oh, oh, they are not playing a region record I'm finding out. And uh, they are 2-5 and five overall, but they are not eligible for some region or for region play. They're not playing a region record. So we see Stevens County at 3-0, and oh, Buford at 3-0, and oh, they are tied for first. And then of course it's the also ran, North Oconee 2-1, and one, North Hall, Madison, uh, White County, Monroe area all at 1-2 and two in the region. Stevens County and Buford right now tied for the top. Now let's move to Region 8, 3A. Let's see who's at the top of the board there. And 
Today we see the Jefferson Dragons are at the top of the board, three and zero on the uh, sub-region or on the region record, and seven and zero overall. Oconee County at two and zero in the region and five and one overall. Elbert County at two and one in the region. They're only on the course from Jefferson and six and one overall. Morgan County one and one in the region, three and three overall. Hart County one and one in the region, four and two overall. Uh, Jackson County 0 oh, and 3 in the region, 3 and 4 overall, and East Jackson 0 oh, and 3 and 1 and 6 in, in uh, overall play. You can see Jefferson right now 3 and 0 oh, undefeated, Oconee County at 2 and 0 oh, also undefeated. Those are your top two teams in Region 8 3A. Moving along now to Region 8 AA, and we see that Union County and Raven County are both tied at the top there with 3 and 0 oh, region records. Uh, Union County is 7-0 overall, and Raven County is 6-1 overall. Washington Wilkes also undefeated. They're 2-0 in the region and 2-4 and overall. Greene County 1-2 in region play, 3-4 overall. Social Circle 0-2 in the region, and Riverside also 0-2, and, and Oglethorpe is at 0-3 in region play. But we see the uh, top spot being held by Union County, uh, yeah, Union County and Raven County. With 3 0 records, Washington Wilk right there with them with a 2 0 record. So everybody kind of bunched up at the top in Region AA. Moving now to Region 8 Single A. Region 8A, Prince Avenue 5 0, all by themselves at the top. A 7 0 record overall. Athens Academy at 3 1 in the region, 5 1 overall. George Walton Academy is 3 1 in the region, 3 3 overall. Hebron Christian 3 2 in the region, 5 2 overall. Commerce at two and two in region play, three and three overall. Athens Christian two and three, three and four overall. Lakeview Academy one and three in the region, two and four overall. Towns County is one and four in the region, one and six overall. And Providence zero oh and four in the region and zero oh and six overall. So we see the Prince Avenue atop of the board with a five zero oh record. Athens Academy and George Walton tied for that second spot with three and one records. And that gets you up to date with all the standings thus far in Region 8, from Region 8 1A all the way up to Region 8 6A. Okay, time to take another break here, and when we come back, we're going to take a look at all the games that are scheduled to be played this upcoming weekend in Region 8. So don't go away. The Region 8 Sports Report is continuing right after this. Back once again with the Region 8 Sports Report. A half an hour with us every week, and you are caught up with everything that's going on in Region 8 football. All right, time to take a look at the schedule of games coming up this Friday night. That's a lot of interesting games coming up here. And remember, we've only got two or three weeks left here, three or four weeks, something like that, until the playoffs kick in. So let's take a look and see who's playing who this Friday night. Time to take a look now at the game scheduled for this Friday night in Region 8. The games that will be played on October 16th, 2015. We'll start with Region 8-6A. Archer will travel to Shiloh to take on the Generals. Brookwood Broncos will be at Decula to take on the Falcons. Grayson Rams will be at Central Gwinnett to take on the Black Knights. And Parkview Panthers will be at South Gwinnett to take on the Comets. Moving along to Region 8-5A, Appalachia still looking for their first win of the year. They'll be on the road at Flowery Branch to take on the Falcons. Winder Barra Bulldogs hope to keep their playoff hopes alive as they take on Cedar Shoals in Athens coming up on Friday night. Gainesville will be at Clark Central, also in Athens, to take on the Clark Central Gladiators Friday night. Heritage will be at Lanier High School. Lanier trying to remain unbeaten in the on the season and in the region. And Loganville will be at Salem. Moving to Region 8, 4A, Monroe area will travel to Buford to take on the Wolves. Chestity will be at Stevens County to take on the Indians. East Hall will be at Johnson of Gainesville. North Hall travels to Madison County to take on the Red Raiders. And White County will be at North Oconee. 
Moving to Region 8, 3A, Jefferson Dragons will be attempting to stay unbeaten as they travel to East Jackson. Hart County Bulldogs will be at Jackson County to take on the Panthers. Oconee County will be at Morgan County. Moving now to 8-2-A, 8-double-A, Oglethorpe County will be at Riverside Military Academy. Union County will be at Raven County. And Social Circle will travel to Washington Wilkes. And in Region 8-A, Lakeview Academy will take on Athens Academy. George Walton will be at Athens Christian. Providence will be at Commerce to take on the Tigers. And Towns County will be at Prince Avenue. And that gets you up to date on all the games scheduled for Friday, October 16th, 2015. We'll take one final break right here, right now, and we'll come back and wrap it up for you and finish it up for this week right after this. You're watching the Region 8 Sports Report. You're all caught up now in Region 8. We've seen the highlights of the Gainesville and, Lo and Lanier football game last Friday night. We've seen all the scores from last Friday night. We've seen the standings and we've seen the schedule of games coming up this coming Friday night. So you are up to date on high school football in Region 8. Get out and support whatever high school happens to be your favorite team this weekend. And we will see you next week on the Region 8 Sports Report. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Remember, if you have questions or comments or anything you'd like to see about our program, be sure to give us a line, av1productions30680 at gmail.com. Once again, that's av1productions30680 at gmail.com. Or if you prefer the good old-fashioned U.S. Postal Service, AV1 Productions, 1021 Jefferson Highway, Winder, Georgia, 30680. Once again, that's AV1 Productions, 1021 Jefferson Highway, Winder, Georgia, 30680.